Good morning, and welcome to the benefits of Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred and St Peter, where you join us for our service of morning prayer on Friday the 3rd of November 2023. My name is John Morrison and I'm standing in for our rector, the Reverend De Richard, and our curate, the Reverend Jenny Walpole. In the calendar of the Church of England, we are asked today to remember Richard Hooker, priest, Anglican apologist, teacher of the faith 1600, and Martin of Porres, friar, 1639. Born in Heavy Tree in Exeter in about 1554, Richard Hooker came under the influence of John Jewell, Bishop of Salisbury in his formative years, and through that influence went up to Corpus Christi College, Oxford, where he became a fellow. He was ordained and then married, becoming a parish priest, and in 1585, Master of the Temple in London. Richard became one of the strongest advocates of the position of the Church of England and defended its middle way between Puritanism and Papalism. Perhaps his greatest work was of the laws of ecclesiastical polity, which he wrote as the result of engaging in controversial debates. He showed Anglicanism as rooted firmly in scripture as well as tradition, affirming its continuity with the pre-Reformation Ecclesia Anglicana. But now both Catholic and Reformed, Richard became a parish priest, again near Canterbury, and died there on this day in the year 1600. Born in Lima in Peru in 1579, Martin de Porres was the illegitimate son of a Spanish knight and a black Panamanian free woman. He joined the Third Order of the Dominicans when he was 15 years old and was later received as a lay brother into the First Order, mainly because of his reputation for caring for the poor and needy. As the Friary Almoner, he was responsible for the daily distribution to the poor and he had a particular care for the many African slaves whose lives were a dreadful indictment of the Christian conquistadores. Martin became sought after for spiritual counsel, unusual for a lay brother at that time. His care for all God's creatures led many to love and revere him and his own brothers chose him as his spiritual leader. He died of a violent fever on this day in 1639 and became, uh, and because of his care for all, regardless of class or colour, is seen as the patron saint of race relations. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these sins, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 17 is, Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand. Hear my just cause, O Lord. Consider my complaint. Listen to my prayer, which comes not from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes behold what is right. Weigh my heart. Examine me by night. Refine me, and you will find no impurity in me. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand. My mouth does not trespass for earthly rewards. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast in the ways of your commandments. My feet have not stumbled on your path. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and listen to my words. Show me your marvellous loving kindness, O Saviour of those who take refuge at your right hand and those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who assault me from my enemies who surround me to take away my life. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand. They have closed their heart to pity and their mouth speaks proud things. They press me hard, they surround me on every side, watching how they may cast me to the ground. Like a lion that is greedy for its prey, like a young lion, lurking in secret places. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand. Arise, Lord, confront them and cast them down. Deliver me from the wicked by your sword. Deliver me, O God, by your hand, from those whose portion in life is unending, whose bellies you fill with your treasure, who are well supplied with children and leave their wealth to their little ones. As for me, I shall see your face in righteousness. When I awake and behold your likeness, I shall be satisfied. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand. Generous Lord, deliver us from all envious thoughts. And when we are tempted by the desire of wealth, let us see your face. For your abundance is enough to clothe our lack. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 19 is, The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out his song to another, and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language, and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the ends of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, and comes forth as a bridegroom out of the chamber, and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens, and runs to the very end again, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The commandment of the Lord is pure, and give light to the eyes. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the law is pure, and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. 
The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter than also than honey, dripping from a honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is great reward. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. Who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, rise in our hearts this day. Enfold us in the brightness of your love and bear us at the last to heaven's horizon. For your love's sake. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Ecclesiasticus chapter 43, the 13th, from the 13th verse to the end. By his command he sends the driving snow and speeds the lightnings of his judgment. Therefore the storehouses are open and the clouds fly out like birds. In his majesty he gives the clouds their strength and the hailstones are broken in pieces. The voice of his thunder rebukes the earth when he appears the mountains shake. At his will the south wind blows so do the storms from the north and the whirlwind. He scatters the snow like birds flying down, and he, its descent is like locusts alighting. The eye is dazzled by the beauty of its whiteness, and the mind is amazed as it falls. He pours frost over the earth like salt, and icicles form like pointed thorns. The cold north wind blows and ice freezes on the water. It settles on every pool of water, and the water puts it on like a breastplate. He consumes the mountains and burns up the wilderness and withers the tender grass like fire. A mist quickly heals all things. The falling dew gives refreshment from the heat. By his plan he stilled the deep and planted islands in it. Those who sail the sea tell of its dangers, and we marvel at what we hear. In it are strange and marvellous creatures, all kinds of living things, and huge sea monsters. Because of him, each of his messengers succeeds, and by his word all things hold together. We could say more, but could never say enough. Let the final word be, he is the all. Where can we find the strength to praise him? For he is greater than all his works. Awesome is the Lord and very great, and marvellous is his power. Glorify the Lord and exalt him as much as you can, for he surpasses even that. When you exalt him, summon all your strength, and do not grow weary, for you cannot praise him enough. Who has seen him and can describe him, or who can extol him as he is? Many things greater than these lie hidden, for I have seen but few of his works. For the Lord has made all things, and to the godly he has given wisdom. Our canticle is a song of the new creation. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in a desert, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way to the inner sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the, the former things, 
nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert and give drink to my chosen people, the people who I have formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Our second reading this morning is from John chapter 18, starting at the 12th verse. So the soldiers, their officer and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside of the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke, to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. And the woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing round it and warming themselves. Peter was also standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. And Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. And when he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high, the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now, Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, and they asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. I will sing forever of your love, O God. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaim your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Our Gospel canticle this morning is the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of all our enemies, free to worship him without fear 
holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Gracious God, we come today as the sun shines after the storm and ask for your blessing and grace on this day and all its tasks. We pray especially for this broken world, for the damage that we have done to your creation and to the violence that we see in Europe and in the Middle East and all over the world. And we pray for the church. We pray especially for those attending the Bishop's study day, that you will be with them as they learn, mark and understand the pressures on all ministers. And we pray that the church will reflect your grace and your love in all our communities. We pray in this season especially for the saints on earth that they may live as citizens of heaven. We pray for all people that they may hear and believe the word of God. And we pray for all those who fear the winter months. We pray especially for those who are sick at this time, those known and loved by us, that they may be healed by your grace. We pray for those who are sovereigns and political leaders, that in their humbleness they will Im imitate the righteous rule of Jesus Christ. And we pray for all those who are grieving at this time or are waiting with the dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our praise. God of peace, the bond of all love, who in your Son Jesus Christ have made the human race your inseparable dwelling place after the example of your servant Richard Hooker. Give grace to us, your servants, ever to rejoice in the true inheritance of your adopted children and to show forth your praises now and forever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against them. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you for joining us for our morning prayer this morning. I will be with you again this evening at 6 o'clock for night prayer Compline. And if you're in the local area, remember our churches are open to you. And we will be back with you on Monday morning for broadcast morning prayer for the benefits at 9 o'clock. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye for now.